The gas laws are pretty straightforward beasts really at GCSE. If you're A-level, then I've got some A-level videos on the gas laws, which maybe go into a little bit more detail. But at GCSE, you just really need to know Boyle's law. This is our kind of standard Boyle's law apparatus. I've got a boredom gauge here. It's currently reading 100 kilopascals. If I double that to 200, then I half the volume. So I've got a trapped mass of gas. That means I can't increase the amount of gas, the actual mass of the gas that's in that column there. And well, we're going to say that roughly its temperature is going to be unchanged throughout this experiment. And when well, I'm on 100 kilopascals now, and we're about 60 centimeters cubed of volume. And if I pump it all the way up to 200 kilopascals, you'll see it's about 30 centimeters cubed. So if we double the pressure, we half the volume. It's really as simple as that. What we'll do is take readings of pressure every 25 kilopascals and we take readings of volume and we plot that graph and we get that nice inverse proportional curve. Values of pressure and volume for this fixed mass of gas just trapped in a column here. The pressure on our board and gauge, the volume of this trapped gas on this linear scale here, but they are inversely proportional. And the graphs that we've all drawn in our class look exactly like this. With If we double the pressure, we half the volume. Pressure and volume inversely proportional, or it can be stated as pressure times volume is equal to a constant, and that will allow you to work out uh, an unknown if you knew a pressure and a volume, and then you change one of those, you could work out the other one after that change. So Boyle's law is that pressure and volume are inversely proportional for a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature. The gas laws go on from there a bit. We've got the Gay-Lussac law and we've got Charles law, which relate pressure to temperature and volume to temperature. And in fact, what we would do with them is we'd experiment up here in our kind of normal regions of temperatures between 100 and maybe 500. We'd get this straight line, but it wouldn't go through zero Celsius, but we would find that they were proportional. So by extrapolating back to the x-axis, we can work out what zero temperature would be. And we'd say that zero temperature is zero degrees Kelvin. Okay, and zero degrees Kelvin is absolute zero, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius. So to convert between Celsius and Kelvin is really easy. So if you've got Kelvin and you want Celsius, you just need to subtract 273. And if you've got Kelvin and you want Celsius, you need to add 273. We'll say that one degree Celsius is equal to one degree Kelvin, but they have a different zero. Absolute zero is like saying the point at which the particles in a substance would have no kinetic energy whatsoever. I hope that's useful to you at GCSE. You just need to really know in detail the Boyle's Law and you need to be able to calculate with that importantly. And you need to know roughly these two and know that the consequence of them is we know where absolute zero is and that's minus 273 degrees Celsius or zero degrees Kelvin. At A level it goes a little bit more involved than that and we can actually derive what we call the ideal gas equation. So there are three videos that I've got which are all about deriving the ideal gas equation from these three laws. And the ideal gas equation is for a fixed mass of gas and we can work out if we vary the pressure, volume or temperature how that will affect the other two variables. And if I have a higher pressure then I have a smaller volume. Okay.